Hello everybody! Today we're going to talk about a utility called Convert-Windows Image. This is a PowerShell script that we can go and grab off the PS Gallery and it's going to allow us to take an ISO file and convert it directly into a virtual hard drive without having to go through the process of mounting and installing and running through all of that inside Hyper-V when you create a new virtual machine. This is going to allow us to rapidly deploy virtual machines inside a Hyper-V environment where you're also going to take a look at dynamic disks. Once we've actually got this process up and running, we can start to duplicate it onto disks that are known as dynamic disks that are linked to a source image file or a source virtual hard drive that is read only. So we can actually deploy virtual machines extremely fast in seconds rather than waiting multiple minutes or tens of minutes to actually do the installation process. So let's get on with it and have a look at these tricks for actually installing Windows 11 without actually installing Windows 11. Let's go! So over here on the PowerShell gallery, we have a command called convert-windows image. We can actually get this installed onto our computer very easily just by using this install module command here, dash name, convert dash windows image. We can just drop that directly into our PowerShell shell here, whack enter, and we're done. Now I already have this installed, but you might get a couple of prompts just to ask you to confirm that this is what you actually want to do. So just YYY to all of those to get those installed. Once that's completed, we also need a copy of a Windows 11 ISO file. Now, this is actually just the trial version. You can actually pull this down yourself if you search for Windows 11 ISO. And this will also work with Windows 7 and Windows 8, and anything that uses the WIM image format. So if we search here for Windows 11 ISO, and we go to the first hit for downloading Windows 11, and we scroll down, you can see there is actually a disk image that you can download here as an ISO. So you can grab that yourself for free. Once we've got both of those components, we need to go and run a specific command. Now, if I drop over here and have a look at the command that I'm about to run, you'll notice that I am actually currently in C users mic admin downloads, and I'm going to run the convert dash windows image command. I need to specify the source path, which dot backslash means the current directory I am in, and I am currently in the downloads directory. So I'm going to specify the location of the ISO. I'm going to specify the edition as Windows 11 Pro, the disk format type as VHDX, and the disk layout as UEFI. Now those two are very, very important because to have a VHDX layout and a UEFI on the disk layout, what this is going to do is it's going to require a Generation 2 virtual machine in Hyper-V to support this. We also need that for Windows 11 to function because that also supports secure boot. And Windows 11 doesn't like Hyper-V unless you have secure boot enabled. Notice the VHD path is set to Windows 11. And I've also got this extra command here called pass through just to suppress an error that's going to come up later on. So if I now run this command, what this is going to do is it's actually going to start converting the ISO file to an image file for me, or more to the point, this is going to take the ISO file and convert this to a virtual hard drive file that I can then use to actually link to an existing virtual machine or a brand new virtual machine on my computer. This shouldn't take too long takes a couple of minutes to actually build. This is going to depend on the speeds of the drives that are actually in your systems. Okay, so our Windows 11 image is now complete. It's actually ready for use. We have a minor error here from disk mount disk image, a parameter cannot be found that matches parameter name pass through. This is nothing to worry about. It's not going to impact the rest. We can see now that I actually have my image called Windows 11 or win11.vhdx and I can attach this to an existing uh, virtual machine should I actually want to use it, but I don't. This is a generic image. We can do one better. So let's run over to the whiteboard for a moment just to see what we've actually got. So we have a virtual hard drive file here, a VHDX file, that's actually got a copy of Windows 11 installed inside it. Now, this copy of Windows 11 that's installed is actually generic. 
There's nothing installed inside here, there's no configurations. This is going to go into the out of box experience if I boot from this drive now. So I could, if I wanted to, create here a virtual machine and attach that virtual machine to this disk. I could boot it, I could run it, and this is going to run Windows 11 for me. But the problem is it's going to customize that image. When it does customize that image, I'm not going to be able to use this again because it becomes unique. Now, one of the cool features of Hyper-V we can actually do is something that is known as a dynamic disk. And what we can do with a dynamic disk is this. We can create another virtual hard drive here or another VHDX file here, and we can actually link it back to this original source. This drive here becomes read-write. This one here stays read-only. What that means we can do is we can now create a virtual machine and actually link the virtual machine to the dynamic disk. So any unique data that gets created inside that virtual machine actually gets written here to this read-write location. But the original disk, the original read-only disk that contains Windows 11 is read through that dynamic disk to be able to use uh, the virtual machine. What this means we can do is it means we can actually have not one, but we could actually have many dynamic disks actually attached and linked back to that same source and have multiple virtual machines linked to each dynamic disk. So. Let's go and do this because the process of doing it in Hyper-V is a little confusing. The interface isn't quite straightforward for it. So I have my original disk here, my Win 11 disk. It's actually in the downloads folder. That's perfectly fine. We'll just deal with it in the downloads folder, but we should really move this to another directory that makes more sense. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to new hard disk here inside Hyper-V Manager because you need to create the dynamic disk separately or the dynamic linked disk separately. I'm going to select this as a VHDX drive and I'm going to select this as a differencing disk because Microsoft's name for dynamic disks is called a differencing disk because it is difference or it actually holds the differences to the source disk. I'm going to call this diff disk one. And I'm going to pop this directly back in that same location. I'm just going to put it in downloads for the moment. So if I drop into downloads on this computer, keep it in the same folder. It doesn't have to be in the same folder. It doesn't matter where it is. I'm just keeping it in there for organizational purposes. The actual virtual hard disk you want to use as the parent. Now that's going to be the Windows 11 disk that I just created. So if I go into downloads, select that Windows 11, open it up, next on that one and finish it. I'm done. Now let's go and create another one. You'll notice this original diff disk is very, very small. It's only four meg in size. Let's go and make another hard disk. And let's go and make another differencing disk. VHDX, differencing here. Next on that one, we're going to call this diff disk two. We'll be very inventive. The location for it, again, we'll just drop it to the downloads folder. And the source disk, again, is going to be that Windows 11 source disk from here. We'll go next on that one, finish on that one, and we're done. Now I can create a couple of virtual machines off this. So let's create a new virtual machine, and let's call this virtual machine diff win 11 one. Okay, and this is going to be a generation two virtual machine, and we'll leave it at four gigs worth of RAM. That'll be fine. We won't bother with any networking at the moment. But we'll connect to this virtual hard disk here. We won't create a new virtual hard disk. We'll use an existing disk. We'll use the existing disk of diff disk one. Let's open that up. Let's click next on that one. Let's click finish on that one. Let's create another one and do it again. Let's do a new virtual machine. Click next on this one. We'll call this the same as before. We will call this diff win 11 2. We'll go next on that one, generation 2. Next on that one, 4 gigs worth of RAM, that's fine. And we'll select an existing disk and we will select downloads and we'll select diff disk 2. Click next, click finish, and that's all complete. So now I can select both of these virtual machines, number one and number two, 
right click on both of them and hit start. If I right click on both of them again and hit connect, you can see I have not one, but I have two Windows 11 client machines that are now going to boot directly into the out-of-box experience for Windows 11. So what we've managed to accomplish here is we've managed the installation of two virtual machines that are running brand new copies of Windows 11 without having to mount ISOs, without having to install the operating system or configure the operating system initially. We can now produce as many differencing disks as we want from the original source drive as well. So this is not just saving us space, it's saving us time and it's really efficient for spinning up lab environments. So I hope you enjoyed this video on how to get Windows 11 installing really quickly into virtual machines without having to make much effort and I hope you'll join me next time uh, for another edition of PowerShell. Have a good day! And you know the routine, hashtag like and subscribe and I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me next time. Goodbye.